so next talk is by Dr. Ashok Seth, my colleague from Scott Heart Institute. Uh, the topic is how to select a TAVI valve for my patient. So Dr. Ashok, please. Thanks. Th thank you very much. I hope you can hear me. Uh, Dr. Lekha Pathak, Dr. Claire, uh, good to see you. So, so I'm sorry we can't I can't be with you for for certain uh, uh, reasons, but uh, that was a great balanced talk by Dr. Dagobati. I enjoyed that talk, uh, uh, Ramesh. That was great, a very balanced, and and oh, your patient selection. So, how to select the valve uh, for my patient is the talk, and uh, this valve uh, is truly getting like a bazaar. Uh, very difficult to make certain decisions. There are similarities, but within the similarities, there are differences. Just there are as differences in the numerous burgers that are available. But clearly one device does not fit all. And I think we need to understand that. Dr. Dagobati just emphasized that particular point. Which value? So, Which value? so if, I have, if I have to actually put some guidance to this, you can't be a one valve person. Anybody who's a one valve person and pushes the boundaries of a particular valve is not doing justice to your patient. But neither should you be a bazaar of uh, five or six different yeah. types of valves uh, yeah. and, and try to use all that because then you don't do justice to your patient and don't master the need for certain certain anatomies. So really have to balance it out as to the number of valves you want and which, which valve suits which patient. The choices we have should suit the patient's anatomy and there's no heroism in pushing the boundaries of a valve idly not suited for the case. For example, in a heavily calcified bicuspid, if you try to push a balloon expandable valve and make it circular, you could have aortic root ruptures. And for that same matter, if in a small femoral artery, which is less than 5.5, you'd start putting an 18 French sheath to put a balloon expandable valve, then we could have a iliac on the stick. So I think we need to realize that we have a variety of devices available to suit patient's anatomy. We should be able to use that rather than push boundaries and just to show that it can be done. And finally, I hate this issue around people trying to show that, ah, look, this was so, but I took this valve because this is the only valve I use and I did it and look, nothing happened. That's because you got away with that complication. So let's understand that we have to use a variety of valves. And finally, we need to be a spokesperson for the patient and not a spokesperson for the valve. We now in India have a variety of valves available to us. The balloon expandable valves are clearly the Mirror Life Sciences Octa, My Valve Octocore and the Edward Life Sciences Sapien 3. The self expandable valves available to us are Evolute R and Pro. That's actually progressed in the United States to Evolute FX platform. Uh, we have the uh, uh, Navitor, which progressed to Accurate Neo, which we have, sorry, the, the, we have Accurate Neo from Boston Scientific, which I launched recently, uh, three months ago. We had the Portico from Abbott, which has now progressed to a latest generation Navitor from Abbott, Vascular and Hydra. Of these self-expandable valve, all, all are not similar. Uh, the Navico, uh, the Portico and Navitor are intra analog valves, while the Evolute R, Pro, Accurate Neo and Hydra are supra analog valves. The balloon expandable valves are all intra analog valves. And what this does basically means is to understand that a valve, like say the balloon expandable and, uh, and uh, Navitor are inside the annulus, while this is, there's certain advantages of a supra annular, at least in smaller anatomies. And that's well understood by the fact that if the valve is above the annulus, in smaller anatomy and perhaps in bicuspid or valve in valve, the, the valve stays above the constrained area of the frame and therefore gives better gradients and uh, perhaps also affects long-term durability and less patient processes mismatch. So if I was to give you general principles around a self-expanding valve and their strengths and weaknesses, well, certainly for the Evolute R Pro, as was pointed out by Ramesh Dagobati, the data from the, the core valve uh, pivotal US trials, as well as uh, the Notion trial, is perhaps has got the strongest long-term durability data exists for Evolute R and Pro. And durability is a very important factor in our assessment of a valve, especially as we move to a younger patients. Self-expandable valves are lower profile and therefore access issues are less in smaller iliacs and femorals. So that's compared to balloon expandable. So that's another general principle. Evolute R Pro perhaps has the best opening radial strength compared to other self-expandable valves. And that is also recognized by the fact that Navitor, uh, uh, Portico, Navitor, uh, uh, Accurate Neo, as well as Hydra require adequate pre-dilatation 
and are not necessarily the greatest valves for heavily calcified anatomy, including bicuspid, but balloon expandable, as well as uh, 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 metronic uh, self-expandable are good valves for heavily calcified anatomy. Superannular self-expanding valve, Veolutar Pro, are great for small analyzers, just as we mentioned, and for valve in valve with the least patient processes mismatch. Accurate new, by the way, and Navitor and Hydra are all very flexible valves, far more than the, uh, the, the Evolute R Pro system. They go across tortuous aorta, angulated aorta, cause less trauma to dilated and angulated aortas, cause less dissection, almost like what uh, Dr. Dagubati pointed out, and therefore are, are, are great for that matter. And coronary access is clearly easier with accurate Neo, Navitor, and Hydra compared to Evolute R and Pro. That's in self-expandable valve category. But when we come to balloon expandable, they're easier to place, clearly. Accurate placement is impo important and they're easier to place. Uh, Self-expandable valves have to be ma mastered. Uh, this implantation is easier. It's great for horizontal leotas. It's great for all forms of calcification. However, caution in bicuspid, because they are, they are elliptical orifices and they're heavily calcified raffae and you actually force these to become round or at least in some way become round. And therefore that could, could lead to chances of annular rupture, also not so great for outflow tract calcification for the same reason, with the higher chances of aortic root rupture. Uh, Bivalve is, 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 I think, a, a tremendous move forwards as a made in India product, which provides tailored intermediate sizing, ease of deployment, and one of the lowest pacemaker replantation rates. And I think we should encourage the use of, uh, of this make in India valve as it is moving steadily and rapidly across Europe and many other countries as a preferred valve of balloon expandable valve of choice. And certainly uh, my conflict is that it is my the valve of choice. I don't see why we should use any other balloon expandable valve, at least in our country. It's got, and balloon expandable valves have easier coronary access. So and all valves are moving towards commercial advertisement. So when I actually see how to, to look at these valves in the longer term, how do I decide on the valves? This is exactly my, my checklist. Age, if I look at age, and as we move to a younger age group, I start thinking of durability. And for that, uh, you know, I think uh, one of the standard valves uh, for me that could be in favor of, uh, of uh, the, uh, the Evolute R Pro platform. But when I look at coronary access, if it's got normal coronary arteries, then I'm okay with the Evolute R Pro platform. But if he's got diseased coronary arteries, and I expect that in future I will have to go in. He's had stents in, he's multiple stents in. There's some borderline disease process. I'd rather put a balloon expandable valve to which I can access coronaries. Pacemaker implantation rates are important. Uh, uh, in a, in, and we know that that's lower with balloon expandable valves. But certainly with, with Evolute R Pro, if we follow the cuspal overlap view and, uh, and get good at it, we can get our implantation rates less than 10% and we'd have them at 8% in our own center. So I think. Yes, in favor of balloon expandable, but you can master uh, 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 a R Pro self-expandable to get low pacemaker rates. Valve and valve subsequently is an important issue in our mind. Looking at a longer term, Ramesh uh, addressed that. But we must remember that what we decide today about valve and valve, 10 years later, every company is going to have a solution for their own valves to actually have, have a valve and valve. And we're not going to live in the present. So for me, looking at 10 years ahead or 15 years ahead, is not such an important point in my mind because I know as an advisor to some of the companies that they're all working on a solution for uh, a valve in valve and I say TAV in TAV uh, uh, solutions. Patient process in this match, huge. Ramesh also mentioned that. It's a predictor of worse outcomes in the longer run. Supra analog valves give less patient processes mismatch, especially in smaller anatomy and big people compared to. Okay, you tell me whenever to stop. <coughs> yeah, okay. sure. uh, you can summarize, I think, because of the paucity of time. Then I, I think then only on this that I will finish up on, on this slide, though there are the cases which demonstrate that. Small analyzer, clearly supra annular valve, uh, uh, vascular access, uh, uh, balloon expandable valve uh, because of the uh, lower profile aortic tortuosity, uh, uh, balloon expandable, or, or, uh, or uh, because of the fact that you can flex the catheters, dilated aortic root, valve which actually goes across smoothly like the Navitor, like the, like the accurate new and the balloon expand uh, and the balloon expandable valves, calcification, heavy outflow tract calcification, self-expandable valve like Evolute R Pro, in fact Evolute R4 for heavy calcification, coronary height risk of occlusion less than 10 millimeters, I could choose an accurate new because you can actually implant them to 8 millimeter coronary heights 
I will look at the sinuses, bicuspid periodic valves is usually my evolute R pro platform and a valve in valve is an evolute R pro pla platform. I think that <clears throat> this is putting it in perspective without going into the cost of it. Uh, and this is the way we follow the principles. So I have one balloon self-expandable valve, which is Evolute R Pro platform in general, though I use Accurate, New, and Navitor. Uh, but uh, again, that's intra uh For a balloon, balloon expandable, yes, you have to have one balloon expandable. So with three valves, you can cover most of this, and it's usually a ratio of 60-40. Uh, I don't think anybody states my ratio of any valve use is 90-10. I think it's doing justice. I think you have to have equal distribution of valves in your practice in general, or somewhat equal distribution. Thank you very much for your attention. Uh, so you said <coughs> balloon expandable are great for any degree of calcification. Don't you think very heavy calcification, uh, self-expanding are better? Yes, yes, you're absolutely right. Uh, the, you see, you have to remember that if you force the valve into an anatomy, and you have, say, outflow tract calcification, you have heavy under calcification, uh, you have rapid calcification, then you could actually rupture the leaflets in such a manner that that uh, or, or rupture the root. So I don't think you then need to force force it in a manner, and that's what uh, uh, Evolute R Pro is good for. Good radial strength, but it's supra annular. So the annulus will fit in the anatomy, with the lower part will fit into the annulus anatomy without forcing it open, and yet you have low gradients because of valve is supra annular. Ashok, which valve is of choice? You have told about the various wells. Yeah, so, so I, I which one you, said, which one you so I said that 60 percent. you use my, it? So I, this is what I said uh, right at the end that in my spectrum of three valves which I use for most commonly, 60 percent is is uh, is Evolute R Pro. 40 uh, no, I'd say 40, 50 percent is Evolute R Pro. 40 percent is uh, Merrill My Valve Octocore. And 10% is accurate neo stroke uh, Nevator. Because now a lot of Indian companies three. have come out with the three, that, well, three valves. Yes, three. And uh, do you think left ventricular hemodynamics are important when you are predicting the outcome of the patient? 100%. My next slides would have shown you that patient processes mismatch and gradients are a tremendous predictor of patient outcomes. And as we get to younger and younger patients, I have no doubt that I will never ever ex implant a balloon expandable my valve or sapien 3 in less than 23 millimeter size in an annulus. In a small annulus, I want to give the best, best gradients and that comes with a supra annular valve. So I don't implant at all a less than a 23 millimeter balloon expandable valve. I think it's a sin and we've always criticized the surgeons for doing so. I would criticize every interventional cardiologist for doing, putting in a less than 23 millimeter balloon expandable. And how many patients requires valve in valve? Uh, how many patients, percentage of patients that we are seeing at the moment? Yeah, I, I would say 5% patients that we're seeing at the moment for valve in valve. Okay, so thank you very much. I think we should move on to the next question. speaker.